So we've got some of the basic anatomy of the digestive system. Now let's look at the histology. We're going to start off by talking about things that are common to all of the structures of the GI tract. So first of all, all of the gastrointestinal tract organs have four tunics in the walls. Remember that tunics are layers of tissues with a common function. So we talked about tunics in the eye, where different parts of a layer might be made of different tissues. In this case, the whole layer is going to be made of the same tissues all the way around, but each layer might have several different tissues in it. Okay. Now, the tunics are going to vary in thickness, in shape, and sometimes in composition from one organ to the next as we progress through the GI tract. So we're, to start out, we're going to start on the lumen side. And facing the lumen is the mucosa. This is an epithelium. Of course it is because it's facing the lumen. What always faces a lumen? The epithelium. It also includes a lamina propria, which is just a layer of uh, areolar connective tissue underneath it. And then there's a really thin layer called the muscularis mucosi. And that's a really thin layer of muscle that holds the mucosa in place and separates it from the submucosa. So the mucosa is this layer here that's all ridgy here, okay? Now, the submucosa is this pink layer that looks like it's full of blood vessels. It is primarily connective tissue. There's some adipose, there's some areolar connective tissue. It's got lots and lots of blood vessels running through it, lots of lymphatic vessels, vessels running through it, carrying fats from the digestive system. Uh, and it has mucin secreting glands that project through the mucosa to produce mucus. Now, the mucosa is also going to have goblet cells, which make mucus. There's lots of mucus in your digestive tract. Why? So that the food can keep moving along and to protect the cells from any sharp foods or acidic foods that might be in the lumen. Now the muscularis is the thickest layer and there's actually two layers of smooth muscles in the muscularis. The inner layer is circumferential, meaning it goes around and the outer layer is longitudinal. So it goes along the length of the tube of the GI tract. Um, when, the, when one part of the GI tract meets another part, such as where the stomach ends and the small intestine begins, then this inner circumferential layer thickens into a sphincter. Uh, this is going to be controlled by this layer in between called the myenteric nerve plexus which is a nervous system intrinsic to your digestive system that controls the contractions of these smooth muscles. Um, the final outer layer is a connective tissue layer called either the serosa or the adventitia. It's mostly called the serosa, serosa. For the few areas that are outside the peritoneum, it's called adventitia, so just be aware of that. But inside the peritoneum, it's called the serosa. Um, this is uh, largely irregular connective tissue and also lots and lots of blood vessels. So the blood vessels that are going to supply blood to the muscularis, they travel through this layer. The, mus the blood vessels that are going to go all the way in to the mu submucosa and the mucosa, they, go th they start in this layer. Now, the blood vessels are, that um, enter from the uh, mesentery and whatever layer of mesentery or serous membrane is a, a connecting that part, and then um, within the lumen, within the mucosa of almost the whole GI tract, the capillaries are fenestrated. And that is so that the nutrients um, loosen or you know created if not created broken down into small enough molecules within the lumen so that they can easily get into the bloodstream 
So within the mucosa, we have fenestrated capillaries. Remember, those are the ones with the little holes in the walls. In these areas here, we're going to have continuous capillaries. This is just going to be regular blood flow. Now, you remember, continuous capillaries have a continuous epithelium. Fenestrated have the little holes. Sinusoids are the ones with the big holes. We don't have these in the digestive tract except the in the digestive tract. We have them in the liver, which is not part of the GI tract. It's an accessory, remember? Okay, so this model shows a close-up of those four layers, um, the four tunics. So here's the mucosa. This um, model is showing the small intestine. This will make more sense later. These little finger-like projections are called villi, and we only see those in the small intestine. Notice that each of these has a little capillary bed inside. Those are fenestrated capillaries. The muscularis mucosa is here at the bottom, separating the mucosa from the submucosa. The submucosa, connective tissue, big um, glands, um, areas of uh, immune tissue, anastomoses of the uh, arteries, and then the larger arteries and veins are going to pass through here. The muscularis externa is here, and you can see the muscle going in two directions. And then here is the nerve plexus, the myenteric nerve plexus between them. And then finally on the outside is the serosa. Okay, and in this particular case, it is the serosa, not the adventitia. Okay, so those are our four tunics. And then as we go along through the digestive system, we'll talk about how these are different in the different sections. And then you'll get a chance to look at microscope slides to see how um, structurally uh, we can see the difference between these.